we do a mic check, please? Hey everybody, welcome back to the Ducks Limit Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Jennings. I'm your host, Dr. Mike Brazier. My name is John Gordon. I'll be your host. And I'm your host, Katie Burke. Welcome to the Ducks Unlimited Podcast, the only podcast about all things waterfowl. From hunting insights to science-based discussions about ducks, geese, and issues affecting waterfowl and wetlands conservation in North America. The DU Podcast, sponsored by Purina Pro Plan, the official performance dog food of Ducks Unlimited. Purina Pro Plan, always advancing. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Ducks Limit Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Jennings. Joining us today, once again, is Jay Anglin, our Waterfowl 360 Great Lakes Migration Editor. Jay, what's going on, man? Oh, you know, just living the dream up here in Indiana, like I like to say. <laughs> now, I do know that the uh, North Zone in Indiana is open. Um, I think maybe the Central Zone is open as well, or at least it was last weekend. But before we get into any details of your specific area, we really want to touch on Michigan. Just recently, you wrote a migration alert for Michigan. It was kind of mixed results back and forth. You know, some people had some ducks, some people didn't. But so what's the lowdown going on in Michigan? Well, I think, you know, Michigan, well, first of all, it's such a, you know, it's a huge state. So you have the Upper Peninsula is basically very similar to northern Wisconsin and, you know, most of northern Minnesota. And then, you know, downstate by me, 10 miles away is, you know, basically like Indiana and Ohio and northern Illinois. So you have this broad range of you know, things going on. So I, I think the, the takeaway for Michigan, for me, just to start out is there's certain areas that are just chuck full of habitat, great marshes, open water, big water, great lakes, rivers, you name it, plenty of food sources, resting habitat. But sometimes it just by luck of the draw pushes, you know, pushes birds, you know, the significant migration uh, period, you know, for a day or two, it just goes right over the top of these certain areas. And um, that's been kind of the theme really for a lot of these places around the Great Lakes the last few years. And it seems like in Michigan, in particular, the Upper Peninsula and parts of the Northern Lower Peninsula, um, you know, where they're just like, there's no birds, there's no migration. And meantime, you know, south of them, three hours, guys are just laying into migrants. So really, that's probably the main, the crux of the matter. Also, it's been a warm year, you know, when I lived in the Upper Peninsula for six years when I went to school and... Um, I could have stayed there if I could have figured out a way, but it's been a lot. That's been a lot warmer than average up there, and um, you know that that's that's pretty significant too. So um, I think a lot of times birds, you know, they migrate, they settle in for a day or two, feed, and then they just don't do a whole lot. So you're not seeing a lot of movement. And certainly that could be said for a lot of areas right now. But that's you know changed a couple of times when we had those big cold fronts come through. Guys got into them, um, but we're definitely, I'd say, in Michigan and in general around the Great Lakes. Um, you know, a little behind on our big pushes of big ducks, for sure. Now, you mentioned in your alert several of the, you know, really popular public hunting areas, Harsons Island. And, and in that, you know, they weren't real. I mean, the habitat appeared to be really good. Um, they just don't have the duck numbers. You think that's what's happening up there? They're just kind of passing by? No, no, that's not the case there. Um, we had that full moon, you know, last week that definitely, you know, the birds really become very nocturnal. Uh, the one thing they do there at Harsons, for example, and some of the other federal and state um, properties in that area, Saginaw Bay and uh, Lake St. Clair, is, you know, they have refuges. And so they survey the refuges, in some cases daily, they go out and do a count where they just drive the truck down a levee and, you know, they're really good at it. You know, apparently they're just not holding a ton of birds. The hunting's been pretty darn good, though, overall. And that suggests, you know, like um, John Darling from Harsons mentioned that, you know, with Canada right next door, Walpole Island, I mean, we're talking huge, huge flooded corn areas and, and moist soil areas. And so a lot of times birds, if there's not a lot of pressure over there, birds uh, will go roost over there. So that's probably a little bit of what's going on there around Harsons Island and Lake St. Clair. Now, I've hunted there extensively. And I've seen that happen before um, where, you know, you watch literally waves of birds coming out and going, you know, east over there to roost. So there's probably a lot more there than they realize. But that said, they've had a pretty good migration. They always do. Um, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that birds came out of the prairie pothole region and piled into Lake St. Clair, um, you know, as far as mallards and 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 some of those, uh, you know, gadwall, for example, pintail. But there, there are a lot of local birds, you know, say for, a, <clears throat> excuse me. 
maybe a couple hundred mile radius in that area, especially in Ontario, that kind of go to go, to the, go there and actually winter there in a lot of cases. So um, I suspect a lot of the birds they have are not, you know, long range migrant birds, but the divers are in there good, you know, as I alluded to in the, in the, in the um, alert as well. But again, they're just behind a little. And I, and I think a lot of that, again, has to do with this ongoing warm periods of weather that just kind of locks birds in and they're not making those big pushes, you know, those big jumps down here anyway. Yeah, you mentioned it's, you know, in mid 60s up there, you know, low 60s, high 50s. And that's pretty warm for this time of year. And that's really probably causing those birds to not have to be as active in some of those areas. So, you know, some of the areas that you mentioned, not Harsons necessarily, but, you know, kind of mentioned that the hunting was a little slow low um that is you you feel like that's kind of playing into it as well oh yeah definitely and i think also you know we've been so dry and now we have some water and you have these huge vast marshes that were dried up and had some you know and you know significant moist soil growth throughout the great lakes region in a lot of these wetter basins and now they have water on them and so birds can utilize those I think also you have an abundance of food. And so you have birds that are moving into an area. Um, maybe they get pushed a little on a really cold, windy night with a west-northwest. And birds end up, you know, in a spot where they're comfortable. And then the temps are in the 50s and 60s. And they just uh, they just stay there. They don't do a whole lot of movement. Um, you know, we just need a really good cold front with, like, temps in the 20s, a little bit of ice to kind of sweeten the deal. And, uh, you know, I think you'll, you're going to find there's a lot more birds around than people realize. Yeah, and I think, You know, I'm no weatherman here, but I'm assuming that you guys are probably have multiple cold fronts coming in the near future up there. Yeah. So, you know, as a steelhead guide, I'm on the, I'm watching this carefully because I'm booking trips well into December right now. And, you know, we'll get locked down with Arctic temps every two or three years, you know, right now. Like I've seen many Mm -hmm. times where the first week in November, we're locked down and I have guys calling me, I don't want to fish at 17 degrees. Well, guess who else doesn't want to fish? Yours truly. So uh, (laughs) (laughs) I'm used to rescheduling a lot of trips this time of year. But right now for the foreseeable future, I looked at the long term, long range and in this area, it's kind of a, a malaise. I mean, it's, it's 50s and 60s and, you know, no super cold nights. Uh, relatively, you know, the winds are a little bit, you know, it's getting sporty out there today and then tomorrow we're going to get some wind and that's good. I might go tomorrow, but the bottom line is, is that this is sort of this whole region. It's just, uh, just, it just kind of flat. Um, the diver guys are doing pretty good though. Um, there's plenty of divers around of all species, no matter what species you mentioned, it's around, uh, throughout Michigan, Wisconsin, Northern Indiana. Um, and, and you know, those birds are going to move no matter what, but especially on days like today, for example, that's really kind of breezy and crappy out there, you know? Yeah, you mentioned all the diving ducks, you know, all the diving duck hunters are doing really well, but one consistent theme throughout most of your alerts this season in the Great Lakes, um, especially in Michigan, is the Canada geese. Um, Everybody seems to be doing pretty well, and, you know, even areas that are not seeing a ton of ducks, they're getting the geese, so at least there's some opportunity out there. Is that pretty much all across the board, and, and what do you think that kind of attributed to? Well, you know, it's funny. We had really good local hatches this year in a lot of areas, okay? So there's a ton of locals. Um, you know, and a lot of geese start moving in in September, even down here, you know, we'll see occasionally. Well, I mean, heck, I saw a speck back in, you know, the first week of September here in LaPorte County, Indiana, you know, with mixed with Canada. So we, we get some early pushes down here that kind of mixes things up. But I would say, you know, crops coming out are, are, are key, of course, for Canada geese. Um, in some areas, they don't have near the corn harvest right now. Um, and w- when it gets a little cooler, that's going to be much more critical. But right now, you have plenty of grass. It's growing green. You've got uh, cover crops, winter wheat. You've got all these food sources for these birds to graze. And um, once they settle into an area, uh, unless there's a lot of hunting pressure, um, you, they're just going to be here. So, yeah, I would say in every every anybody that isn't hunting geese, that, that can hunt geese right now, should be out there looking around for geese if they're not having any success with ducks because there are a lot of geese around. Now, I should mention here in northern Indiana, we just went into our little split we have where we're closed. It closed Sunday. I was sitting in a tree stand Sunday, and the field behind me was picked the day before that I can, of course, hunt, and about 800 geese piled into it. So there's always that little antagonistic you know, way that they kind of tease us during these – because most states have splits now. So it seems like during these splits – They'll come into an area that certainly happened here. We are absolutely loaded in northern Indiana and southern Michigan. Um, you know, they're still hunting in Michigan. I believe it's still open. But the bottom line is, is that in those those splits are doing a really good job of holding birds. As much as they drive me crazy, they do help because birds, you know, 
settle in for a week or two or three. And then next thing you know, you've got another opener coming and you can kind of get after them again, you know? Yeah, definitely take some pressure off of them. Uh, you know, that seems to really help keep those geese around. Now, let's go ahead and focus there in, in Indiana. Um, are you hearing any good reports out of Indiana? You know, what what's kind of, what are you hearing there? I would say based on, and I've been hunting quite a bit when I can. And, you know, the guys I, I'm around, you know, there's always this sort of your your local cadre of good guys that you talk to and hang out with and hunt with. And everybody's been doing really well. You know, even like, for example, Sunday, I, I was laughing. I mean, it was super foggy. I'm like, who would go out today? Everybody I talked to was like, oh, man, we sh- we got into the green heads today. And so we've had some pretty good pushes that have come into this area. Um, and it started all the way back at the opener a couple weeks ago um, where my son and I went out and we, you know, with redheads and, and ringnecks. Of course, it's getting into that prime diver migration, you know, zone. But um, a lot of options. I mean, pretty much anything. I mean, we saw pintails, blacks mallards tons of gadwall widgeon tons of green wings you name it shovelers um and so that's really a good thing now a lot of those birds have moved on of course um into you know southern parts of this state and others nearby but um bottom line is is that i would say all things considered this is one of the better um you know they pushed our opener back a week which i i you know it's later so i i actually really like it and you know, even with our youth veteran season, the prior weekend, which usually really puts a whooping on some of these areas, it was it was very good um, for our opener, and it still is. I was out yesterday. It was probably the first significantly slow day that anybody hadn't seen since the opener. So, um, you know, I hunted in Michigan on Saturday. It was pretty darn good. Saw a ton of ducks. So we're 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 doing pretty well here. And I would I would think I haven't dug into Ohio. I would think it's similar over there. And I've heard some pretty good reports out of uh, Illinois as well and Southern Wisconsin. So this whole area, we're we're really we're 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 pretty hooked up right now. And again, that's really good for the guys down south because um, you know these birds will push down there. The first nasty weather we get, especially the softer you know ducks. I call them soft ducks, of course, but sort of you know your 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 mid to early season migrants that are still kind of hanging around here. They're going to boogie. So you know those guys down south waiting for openers. I mean, you're you're looking. In a pretty good, you're in a good position right now. You've got a lot of ducks stuck in this, you know, range here that's not that far away, and it won't take much, you know, of a push for them to show up. So, are you hearing anything? I know we did a Wisconsin alert, you know, about ten days ago, and it sounded like, you know, they were just starting to really pick up, especially the diving ducks um, on some of the big refuges up there. But are you hearing anything out of Wisconsin? I think just the diver push up there is always pretty, you know, it's a calendar thing. And um, usually this week is when, like, for example, um, seven, pool seven, eight, nine, and on the Mississippi really load up with cans, you know, it's most significantly the canvas backs. Around, around Wisconsin, it's such a great state for waterfowl hunting. Um, just, just absolute, it's just loaded with habitat. Um, once deer season kind of really starts getting revved up in Minnesota and Wisconsin, you stop hearing a lot of reports, but I'm hearing some pretty good things out of Wisconsin. I will say the one thing I have noticed though, is we picked up a lot of redheads in, in I'm talking Indiana, Southern Michigan, ringneck. We probably are just past our prime ringneck migration, but we're starting to see some bluebells now um, and some cans. I got into the cans the other day. And a lot of those birds, you know, usually hit us right about, in, you know, the next two weeks. And I think some birds got past Wisconsin, um, judging by what I'm hearing. Like guys are like, we haven't seen any migration yet. And I'm thinking, well, yeah, they went right over you. So, um, you know, they might, some of those areas in Wisconsin where guys are really used to seeing really good pushes of birds, they they might have had birds just, just whistle on past. So, you know, it, it's going to be an, a non-issue here in the next two weeks when things start shuffling down, you know, no matter what. So I, I, I should add too, one of my contacts in Northern Minnesota, he said, that they're not seeing the mall- late season mallards they usually do up there because they've had ice and snow a couple times already. Um, and he's talking to a friend of his in Manitoba who said they're still covered with greenheads, so with mallards. So I would say, you know, the first really significant blast um, that hits sort of that, you know, international, you know, boundary, you're going to see some big pushes of birds coming down into this region. Yeah, and that sounds like, uh, you know, pretty much the full roundup of all Great Lakes State. It's really waiting on weather now. You know, it just seems like everybody seems to be waiting on that next push. Um, although it sounds like you have, you know, you have some pretty solid numbers there in northern Indiana. Now, I talked to a good buddy of mine that hunts down south of you about three hours or so down by Terre Haute, and uh, they didn't fire a shot last weekend. They heard some shooting, but they, he said that they just, they didn't really see a bunch of birds. So, 
you know, maybe they're just kind of stalled up there in northern Indiana waiting on that next that next front, hopefully for those guys anyway. Yeah, I mean, it's been, I don't know how warm it was, but it's been really warm. And so I think a lot of days they just don't do a lot. I know mean, one thing, if I was down there, you know, in one of those areas where just not seeing a lot of mallards and other species, I'd probably just go to the nearest creek or river and find a bunch of oak trees and sit underneath and be happy with three tasty wood ducks myself but you know most guys up here are talking about how there aren't any wood ducks but last night again i was in a tree stand and i had waves of woodies coming over me to go to roost um you know they're still around there's a bunch of them and uh, no one's really capitalizing on them um so that's always a great option if you're open and you don't see a lot of birds go find some woodies because there should be a bunch of them should be a bunch of them along with the geese well jay this has been good before i get you out of here a uh, question i always ask you with just about every update uh, how's the fishing you know it's been kind of weird it's it's been you know hit or miss i mean we get a big push push of fish and then it gets warm out the water temps get almost you're talking about cold water species so it gets a little rough sometimes but right now i'm coming into like you know the leaf hatch is over i call it when all these deciduous trees drop their leaves you really can't fish the rivers too easily and if at all so yeah, I've got musky going, brown trout, steelhead, salmon are done, and uh, life's good. So, yeah, I'm trying to juggle all this stuff, and uh, uh, it's my favorite time of year. Awesome, man. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks for uh, you know providing this update for the Great Lakes region. And uh, it sounds like everyone's just waiting on weather, which is about about right for this time of year. Yeah, I would say that's definitely the case. And uh, but you know, get out there. I mean, I, like if, for example, where I am, it's just it's pretty darn good right now. You're not gonna be able to form an opinion if you don't go out and give it a whirl you know that's right you got to get out thanks a lot jay i appreciate it all right take care see you i'd like to thank my guest jay anglin the waterfowl 360 great lakes migration editor for providing a little update around the great lake states i'd like to thank our producer chris isaac for putting the show together getting out to you and i'd like to thank you the listener for joining us on du podcast and supporting wetlands conservation Thank you for listening to the DU Podcast, sponsored by Purina Pro Plan, the official performance dog food of Ducks Unlimited. Purina Pro Plan, always advancing. Be sure to rate, review, and subscribe to the show and visit ducks.org slash DU Podcast. Opinions expressed by guests do not necessarily reflect those of Ducks Unlimited. Until next time, stay tuned to the Ducks. Stay tuned.